In the past decade alone, many musicians utilize digital sound design to elevate their songs because of its accessibility and its variability of sounds. Synthesizers come in many forms, such as additive synthesizers, subtractive synthesizers, frequency modulation synthesizers, and many more. Before the demonstration starts, this isn't a tutorial because everything will go by pretty quickly. I also want to issue a small headphone warning for the demonstration. To start, I'm not trying to approach a certain sound, so I begin by editing the LFO into a randomized pattern and assigning it to multiple destinations while tweaking every possible knob that I could possibly tweak. This is where I stop talking about my process to say more importantly that this oversimplified demonstration isn't really too accurate of a representation of how powerful sound design is, as explained by other producers and musicians later on. I was really interested in sound that had a lot of high frequency, really harsh, resonant, ringing sounds. And you can't really get that with a piano. You can't get that with a guitar or a cello or anything like that. So I got into computer music that way. Object Blue is a London-based techno producer and DJ who's heavily devoted to sound design in her music career. In addition to an interest in exploring different sounds, the internet facilitates the artist's approach to sound design by immersing them in different music cultures and artists which act as inspiration and influences for their music. Joe Peterson is a music producer that pulls influences like deep house and electronic music to music that features guitars and analog synthesizers. I just like listen to other artists all the time and um, I would just constantly try to copy exactly what they do. And I would just try to steal everything from everybody. And, uh, you know, eventually, eventually if you steal enough, then, you know, you kind of just get in, get your own thing going. Without the internet, I wouldn't find a lot of the obscure music that I listen to and I find inspiring. I'm not really interested in limiting um, access to other art. Thomas Stearns is a Carmont senior who has listened to a variety of experimental artists. A lot of the artists that I've listened to are all very like textural and um, rather than focusing on like having like a melodic focus or like a simple like song structures and stuff. Uh, like some examples of that like that I listen to like JPEG Mafia. Also like Arca but it's like great like texture and just like really weird just sounds and i think that that is probably the direction we're going in like within the last decade i think that uh there's more of a focus on it now but like due to the advent of the internet being so popular and like a common like medium of finding new music so like weird stuff is like very easy to find and the people who want weird stuff will find it despite the increasing usage of software synthesizers there are other artists that prefer hardware synths for the songs they are making Ultra Boy is a lo-fi music producer that uses samplers and other instruments for his music. To expand on the style of music he makes, Ultra Boy recently began singing in his songs. Being able to have like the uh, the physical component and like uh, adjust it while it's running, I think, is really valuable. And there's a real like there's a, a warmth difference, I think, um, in the sound when you're using an analog device versus uh, a digital synth. Reporting from Scott Center News, I'm Brandon Moon.